If you do a quick Google search, you can come up with these horrific things about how wind farms are these mass bird killers um, that they're going to cause the extinction of a whole bunch of species. Um, and if you speak to industry, they always like to quote the fact that um, more birds are killed by um, cats and windows than, than wind energy and you don't need to, to worry about it. But the truth is actually somewhere in between. Um, the number of collisions per turbine, it's actually quite a, a rare event. Um, if you go to a wind farm, you're not going to see a, a bird collide, it's very unlikely. Um, but even small, colli small collision rates can be quite significant. Um, but I also don't agree with the wind energy's argument about more birds being killed by cats and windows because you need to look at what species are being affected. Cats are very good at killing pigeons. Um, I don't know when last I saw a cat kill a vulture. Birds can be affected by wind energy in a number of ways. Um, the most obvious is that they can collide with the turbine blades and sometimes even the turbine towers. And there are also more subtle impacts. Um, birds can be affected by this disturbance and associated with building a wind farm or even maintaining it and um, they can be displaced um, they might not want to be hang around where the turbines are um, and there's also a, a certain degree of habitat loss and fragmentation associated with wind farms. It's really important that we put wind farms and solar farms in the right place. So BirdLife South Africa works with industry and government to set standards um, to make sure that impact assessments are done properly and importantly that we monitor those impacts. So BirdLife South Africa works really closely with the South African Wind Energy Association. They've been fantastic in supporting our work. They've actually been quite instrumental in getting our guidelines um, adopted as a norm in South Africa. At BirdLife South Africa we recognise it's really important to be proactive. It's a lot less effort to make sure that wind farms are located in the right place early on in the planning process. So we have a sensitivity map that helps developers and specialists get an idea of what the likely sensitivity of an area is in terms of wind energy. But what we also offer for developers is we do a, a free basic screening exercise using desktop information. So before they invest a, a lot in a, a, a site, um, they get an idea of what the likely issues are. The obvious example of a, a conflict is um, putting a wind farm near a vulture roost. Vultures are amongst the most collision prone birds in the world and they're also a huge conservation priority in South Africa. Although renewable energy can impact on birds, it's really important to, to keep perspective. If you look at the impacts of, of coal, just in terms of the habitat loss transformation, the air pollution, not to mention climate change, which is a major threat to biodiversity. So BirdLife South Africa is often um, questioned why are we supportive of wind energy and renewable energy. And it's all about maintaining perspective and, and, and balance. We can expect to see a lot more wind and solar farms in South Africa as we go forward. Um, South Africa is definitely seen as one of the preferred countries to invest in in terms of renewable energy and it, it's a great thing. We've got some admirable targets for renewable energy but for developers and for bird life it's probably going to get more and more tricky as we run out of those low hanging fruits. If more of us could take responsibility for where our energy comes from, for our energy consumption, um, it would really reduce the need for these industrial scale wind and solar farms which, which are impactful themselves but also the power lines that bring the power down um, are quite impactful. So a lot of people feel a little bit powerless, um, they want to object to every single wind farm but there's a lot they can do in the individual homes as well.